tell me what's the creepiest experience you ever had in your life and why you still think about that moment. So about 10 years ago, I worked as a float pool nurse and I came in to relieve a charge nurse that had been there for 16 hours. She worked from 7A to 7P, but then stayed extra due to short staffing um, to 11P, which was, you know, normal for her. She picked up a lot of extra shifts. Um, everything went as planned. And, you know, my shift went fine until 4 a.m. I was at the nurse's station charting. I looked up and she is a, she, there she was. She was walking towards the elevator, very distinct walked, very distinct hair, had the same bag, was just bopping along like she normally does. And I said, hey, so-and-so, what are you doing here? It's four in the morning, you just left. She just kept walking like she didn't hear me. So I said, oh, okay, well, maybe she's getting breakfast. I'll catch you when she comes back up. And about two hours later at six in the morning, her husband called and told us that she fell asleep behind the wheel on the way home and crashed into a tree and died. So as you all know, I used to work at a hospital. This is now story number three of my creepy stories. One night I'm walking down the hallway when I hear somebody calling me into one of the rooms. When I go into the room, I see this very elderly woman sitting in a chair. She's knitting something. She's sitting right across from her husband who's the patient. She greets me like with the biggest smile and goes, sweetie, can you help me? And I said, of course, like, what can I do to help? Then she goes, my husband's not doing so well. He's in really bad shape. Can you check up on him? And I said, of course, like, let me get your nurse. I'll be right back. So I step out of the room. I'm looking around for the nurse. I see her right across. So I kind of call her over. And I'm like, the patient's wife in this room um, wants you to check up on her husband. She looks at me again, like I have 10 heads, like the patient's wife. And I'm like, yeah, the patient in this room wants you to check up on him. He's not doing so well. So she looks down on some of the paperwork that she had with her and she goes, that patient's wife passed away last year. According to this, he's widowed. Part two. Creepiest things that have happened to me as a nurse. Part cinco. When I was an LPN, I worked at a nursing home at the beginning of my years and we had this beloved resident that we called Jimmy and he lived in 1A. And he would always go around and talk to us and say good night to us every single night. One day, Jimmy just beautifully died in his sleep. And then three days later, someone moved into his room and came out of his room the second and third night he was there and said, can you please tell Jimmy to get out of my room? He must be demented. And he keeps saying that this is his room, but this is my room. And can you please go in and talk to him? Me? And the other CNA were super freaked out and we did not go in the room. Finally, Don, one of the other CNAs on another like wing was like, I'll go in. No one was there. Okay, can we talk about this? Because this is wild. You can't really see it up there, but this guy is talking about how he took a patient to the morgue and he saw them sitting in the room where he took them from two hours ago. And something similar happened to me, right? So back, back, back in the day, like, ooh, my heyday, I used to work as a patient escort and I had a call or order to take somebody to the morgue like I always did, right? So like I physically remember pulling them off the, the bed and getting them on my gurney so I can, you know, take them down and put the toe tag on them, right? So, um... As I was like doing my rounds during the day, I saw that patient walk in the hall, like they walked right past me, said hello, and I'm like, oh, hey, you know? And I like had to stop, like, what the hell? Like, that's the person that I took to the basement. So I'm like, let me go back and look at my call order. Like, am I going crazy? So I look and I see the order. I go back to the room just, just to see, like, is the room empty? Are they still there? Was I tripping? And of course it was all cleaned up for the next person and i asked the lady at the reception desk like didn't didn't that person go down to the morgue and they were like yeah child freaked me out but i don't know how i forgot this story like maybe i suppressed it because it was like so traumatizing for me like what in the world but yes i remember seeing somebody in the hospital walking around you know after i took them to the morgue myself me i took them down there and they were i saw them walking the hall like they spoke to me like hey you know and i and i should have thought that was weird because it's like what well i guess not like people just say hi but 
Hey y'all, welcome back to All Things Jenny. I'm Jenny. So this is episode four of Creepy Sundays. And I will tell you about my stories while I actually work in a nursing home. Right now I work at a hospital, but I've been in a nursing home, like healthcare field for a really, really long time. And especially working in nursing home and memory cares. I've worked in those areas for the longest. So I have a lot of stories. I've even used to go to people's houses who are on hospice care, you know, and do all that extra, you know, help them out and basically wait until they pass, basically, right? Tell me a ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable, but is entirely true. So I work in healthcare and I've always worked in healthcare. And uh, when I was 18, I worked in a nursing home. And uh, it was my first job right out of high school. And uh, I loved it. It was fun. And, you know, I enjoy healthcare. Anyway, um, I was working night shift. And I think anybody that works in healthcare and that works night shift, if you know, you know. Um, this was my first time working a night shift. I usually worked the PM shift or from like 3 to 11. I can't remember what it is anymore, but like 3 to 11. But the people that were supposed to come in on nights didn't come. So then I had to stay. So uh, like 3 o'clock in the morning, I was trying to finish up some... Uh, some of the duties I was helping one of the residents with something and uh, I was taking some uh, garbage from their room into the utility room and as I'm walking into the utility room I see out of the corner of my eye what I thought was the nurse walking into another resident's room across the hallway and uh, so I walk in the utility room I drop my stuff off it takes me like 30 seconds to do it's not that hard so when I come out I look up and I see the call lights off so the call light if you don't know how they're outside the rooms and they let you know that somebody needs something so I thought the call light was on when I went in the utility room. That's why I thought the nurse was going in there and it was off when I came out. So then when I go down the hallway, I can see the nurse standing at the end of the hallway by the nurse's card. So I go down and I ask her, uh, what did this resident need? And the nurse kind of looks at me puzzled and says, I don't know, you're the one that answered the light. And I said, mm, nope, I didn't. Kind of figured you answered it when you walked in there. And she goes, what are you talking about? I haven't even been down there this whole night. I'm still um, passing her meds or doing whatever she was doing up there. She was like, I haven't been down there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I literally watched you walk in there. She goes, I have not been down there. I've been at this cart since the shift started. And she could see like the weird, like puzzled look on my face, I guess. So then she was like, she got the shit grin on her face. And she goes, you saw her, didn't you? And I go, care to fill me in? Who was that? She goes, we have a ghost. We have a ghost in the nursing home. Uh, we think it was a nurse. And she used to answer call lights. and Or she is answering call lights. That's why we think she was a nurse. And uh, people see her all the time on the night shift. And I always tell people, like, this, this story always freaks me out. I know I do paranormal stuff uh, all the time. And I'm usually a skeptical or a skeptical person when it comes to that. Because I think a lot of stuff can be explained. But I always tell people, I think the reason that that story sticks out so much is, number one, it happened to me. So I know what I saw. And number two is that... I know what I saw. I wasn't, I knew I saw a person walk in that room. I would, there, there was no doubt in my mind. I didn't think I saw something. I wasn't a shadow. It wasn't a, a blurry thing. Like I know I watched somebody walk into that room it is always stuck with me and has always freaked me out. That's my ghost story. So when my mom told me this story, it gave me goosebumps. So my mom is a hospice nurse, and one night a few years ago, she was on call, and she gets a call from one of the hospitals in town that says, hey, we got a patient, they just got the bad news from the doctor, and they want to they be on hospice. My mom, do your job, okay, let them know I'll be there shortly, uh, probably take me about 10 minutes. So at the hospital was this woman, uh, we'll call her Jane, uh, she had just gotten told by the doctor, you know, the bad news that she had terminal cancer and um, she didn't have a whole lot longer to live. So while her family was there, they elected to go on hospice uh, for the remaining time that she had left. So after they had made the decision as a family, um, her kids, everybody, they left. So Jane was kind of sitting there taking it all in while, while she was waiting for the hospice nurse. In this moment, uh, a woman walks in her room and Jane's kind of looking up like, who the hell are you? And this woman introduces herself and says, hi, my name's Betty. Uh, I'm your neighbor. I've been your neighbor for the last couple days here in the hospital. I'm just in the room down the hall. And um, I heard the bad news. So I just wanted to come in and say, is there anything I can do for you um, to let you know that it's going to be okay? And Jane was like, what do you mean you heard the bad? How did you hear the bad news? And she, she was kind of taken aback by this. And she, so she's talking to me and she goes, no, I'm, I'm okay. I think I just need some time. Um, you know, the hospice nurse is coming. I'm going to just take some time to myself. So this woman comes and goes, okay, you know, okay, sweetie, we're in the Midwest. Okay, sweetie, if you need anything, let me know. And so instead of turning around and leaving the room, Betty turns around or turns and walks into the bathroom of Jane's room and shuts the door. 
and Jane was just kind of shocked, like, what is happening here? And literally, probably 60 seconds after that happened, uh, my mom got there. She came and she knocked on the door, you know, hi, you know, I'm the hospice nurse, uh, do you have a minute to talk? And Jane was kind of like, yeah, I guess. So my, my mom, she's been a nurse for a really long time, and so she sees like this hesitation on Jane's face and she can hear it in her voice and she's like, you know, is there something on your mind? Do you wanna say something? And Jane was kind of like, so my neighbor, Betty, just came in and, you know, was really sweet, really a nice lady, but she just went into the bathroom and she's still in there. My mom was like, oh, okay. She would like, how long has she been in there? And Jane was like, like a minute or so, but I can't, you know, I don't hear anything. I don't hear you know, what's going on. So my mom is trying to be very polite. Obviously this is a, a situation where Betty doesn't need to be there. And you know, my mom's been in healthcare for a long time. She thought maybe Betty might have a little dementia or something. So she walks over to the bathroom door and she knocks and there's no answer. She knocks again and she says, hey, you know, I'm um, so-and-so I'm with hospice. Uh, I'm gonna open the door. So then she goes to open the door and there's nobody in there. So then, you know, my mom says to, to Jane, you know, um, gosh, there's, you know, there's nobody in here. And Jane's like, you know, kind of wigged out, obviously this is, she's like, I, I had a conversation with her. Like, I'm not sleeping, I'm not groggy. Um, she was in there. And so, you know, my mom was like, okay, well let's, um, you know, you just had a traumatic, you know, thing happen. You know, it's a lot going on. Uh, you know, let's kind of get going. We'll, we'll, we'll talk through this and you know, maybe I'll go check on Betty and maybe she slipped out at some point when you weren't doing, you didn't see her. So they finished the paperwork. Cause of course, you know, it's healthcare. There's paperwork for everything. So they finished the paperwork. You know, my mom says, you know, they finished chatting and my mom says, okay, well I'll go check on Betty and, and we'll be at the end. And Jane's like, okay, you know, thank you for coming. So my mom leaves and walks over to the room that Betty said she was from and she looks in and there's nobody in there. So then she walks down to the nurse's station to kind of, you know, report off, I guess, what she had done and um, kind of keep in communication with the nurses. And as she's reporting to the nurses, she tells them, you know, hey, uh, Jane said Betty kind of came in her room right before I got there and um, I can't find her in her room now. So I just want to make sure that, you know, if she has dementia or something, she's not lost somewhere. So somebody could just make sure she's okay. And I'll never forget my mom's face when she told me this part. She said, the nurse looks at her and goes, what? So my mom goes, uh, Betty, I just want to make sure she's okay. She was in, you know, and recants the story. And the nurse looks at her and goes, Betty died this morning, like 12 hours ago. Betty's not there. Betty was not in her room. And of course, you know, my mom was shook, shooketh by this. Uh, my mom is not a storyteller. She's not a, uh, I mean, she obviously, she's a spiritual person, but you know, she's not a big into the paranormal. So this really, took her back she was pretty freaked out by this but yeah that when she told me the story like i said i know her um she doesn't make up stories she doesn't make this stuff up so when she was telling me this like i got goosebumps i'm like that is that is creepy hey y'all so let me tell you about the time that i worked at the nursing home long-term care facility i know y'all like damn she always going through some stuff with the long-term care facilities but not to knock it because I actually loved it but y'all so there was this one time I was working I was working day shift and this nurse came in um she was a new grad not knocking new grads y'all I love I used to be a new grad so um she came in and she was supposed to be in orientation still so she got there at the same time I did and she was gonna be working the other cart with the other nurse um but the other nurse wasn't there yet so she counted the cart y'all she went ahead and started pulling her meds and everything and so i asked her i was like hey i said um are you gonna wait for so and so and she was like um no she told me to go ahead and get started and she'll be here soon and i was like oh okay so i'm thinking that's what the lady told her y'all this girl had no clue what she was doing so maybe she got like five or ten patients in no it was it was about seven so yeah, she got about seven patients in and I get a call from one of the CNAs and she's like, hey, please come down here to room two, I'll make up a number, 202. I was, so I take off running. And so she was like, um, she's like, yeah, um, the nurse is down there on the floor. And I was like, what's going on? She was like, um, something's wrong. I think I'm, I think I done passed out. And I was like, what you mean? You think you done passed out? She was like, yeah, I just I feel so weak in the knees. And so she was in the patient's room on the floor. And so I'm like, what happened? And she was like, she was like, you take the patient out or the resident. She's like, you take the resident out. I don't want them to hear what I got to say. 
and the resident, like she was bed bound, y'all. She can't come out and get out of their, room, their bed or anything like that. So I'm like, what's going on? So she was like, I took, um, she's like, I took the person in 205's meds. She, I was like, what you mean you took their meds? She's like, I took their pain meds. I was like, why would you do that? She's like, cause I ran out of mine and I need some medicine to take. So I was trying not to like talk about her or anything, but I was like, I said, um, I said, so what did you take? She said, um, they had Norco and then the um, people in 201 and they had Tramadol and then the people in, <laughs> y'all, she took three people's meds within like the time, I don't know how long the time span it was. It wasn't long though. And so um, I said, okay. Um, so I helped up off the floor. I took her back to the nurse's station. I helped her sit down. So um, I was like, I'd be right back. So I went and got my DO in. And I was like, hey, um, I said, so-and-so, the nurse, I was like, she um, she took some medicine and so she's just not feeling well. And she's like, what kind of medicine did she take? I said, you have to ask her that. And so she's like, um, she's like, she did have surgery last week. So she, I was, she's like, I wonder if she just, um, the meds are just not working for her. I was like, mm. I said, just go ask her. And so she was like, is everything okay? I said, go ask her, <laughs> y'all. This is from Rosa. Hey guys, this is a true experience for you. So years ago, I used to work in a huge care home. It was a super old building and really creepy. Staff had spoke of many paranormal experiences that they had had, particularly on nights. I used to wait nights, I feel your pain. But I thought they were just trying to wind me up because it was my first ever night shift. There was only ever one member of night staff in the whole building. We had a resident who slept on the second lounge on a sofa with the door open. She wouldn't ever sleep in her bedroom upstairs if she said it was haunted. Oh, no. This night around 2 a.m., I saw a small person running past the door to the lounge I was sat in. I got up from the sofa and heard a voice saying, Mummy. Oh, God. From down the hall. The resident who sleeps downstairs used to play tricks on the staff all the time, so I figured it was her. I stood up to go and find her, but when I walked past the second lounge door, she was fast asleep on the sofa. I felt so creeped out that I rushed back to my lounge and sat on the sofa facing the door and didn't dare move all night. When the morning staff came in, I told them what had happened and a detailed description of the person I thought I saw. They all looked shocked and knew exactly who I was referring to. I had described a lady who used to be a resident in the care home years before I started working there, and she often used to run up and down the hallways at night. Oh. Honestly, I totally agree. Um, I have, I, so I, I've worked in, again, in healthcare for a really long time. I've worked in nursing homes, hospice, hospitals, all kinds of stuff. And to be honest, I actually haven't had a lot of paranormal experiences, but I'll tell you, out of the handful that I've had, two of the creepiest ones were at this nursing home. So the one that I told um, was one creepy one that kind of happened right away when I started working there. After another couple of years of working there, I had another incident that was just crazy. And it was it's mind boggling. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. But uh, so the nursing home itself is shaped like a giant H. So like if you were looking down on it, it's like a giant capital H. So each side of the H is like a, a ward or a wing or a hallway or whatever. And then the connecting one in the middle is the one that connects the two. And then there's a nurse's station at each end. So the nurse's station at the end can actually look down both hallways. So, so anyway, and it was another night where uh, somebody on night shift didn't come in. So I was staying until 3 a.m. And then somebody from day shift was coming in at three to relieve me. So I'm sitting there. I got all my duties done. I did whatever. So I was just kind of sitting there uh, at that nurse's station looking down so I could see down both hallways in case a light was to go off and somebody needs something. And I had one resident that was there. He was a younger gentleman. Um, he was probably only in his 60s. I don't even remember why he was there. Um, but I know he had balanced walking because he walked with a walker. But he was up, so he was out there. It was getting close to 3 a.m., so we were just bullshitting. And uh, all of a sudden, he gets kind of wigged out about something. And he stands up and he starts, who's that? Who's that man down there at the end of the hallway? I'm kind of looking down there going, you know, hey, Gary, we'll call him Gary. Gary, there ain't nobody down there, buddy. And he's like, no, no, no. There, I mean, he was so convinced there was somebody down there that he actually got up, grabbed his walker and walked down to the end of the hallway, came back and goes, yeah, I don't know where he went. He was down there, but now he's not. So as we sit there and like probably two, three minutes later, all of a sudden down that same hallway, I hear this woman, Maria, uh, start yelling. And Maria only speaks Spanish, but you could tell she was upset. And so she was yelling and I don't speak Spanish, but again, I knew she was upset. So I went down there. 
And I could hear her just, you know, ombre, ombre, ombre. And like, there's a dude in her room. That's what she thinks. And they're like, Maria, there's nobody in here. You're fine. And so she was very upset. And these people were, they're long-term residents. They've been there for a long, like we know them. I know them. This is very atypical or not typical behavior for them. And uh, so I was trying to get her calmed down. And as I'm trying to get her calmed down, Harry, the guy across the hallway, directly across from her, starts yelling, get the hell out of my room. What are you doing here? Get out of here. So I'm like trying to get her settled. And I'm going over there and Harry's half out of bed. He can't walk on his own. And he's dead certain that there is this man coming, going through his stuff in his room. And I'm just sitting there like, what the hell is happening? This all happened like within a five, 10 minute period. Everyone's going crazy. Like what the hell is going on? So I finally got everybody situated and calmed down, reassured everybody. There's no random man going through anybody's stuff. And then, uh, when I got to the, it actually took me a while so at the time I did not connect all all of these things together I just thought you know everybody's going crazy at this point but it took me a minute to connect them all together but when I did I'm like holy cow was there like a was there like a, a ghost like a, of a man or something down at the end of that hallway coming in and out of rooms um I had three residents within like a five minute time span all tell me they saw a random guy down there and there was nobody else down there so that was a freaky experience. Nursing home haunts. This happened pretty recently and I just felt the need to share it on Reddit. I work in a nursing home that is also attached to a hospital. Lately there had been a lot of death in the nursing home and it's so weird like it comes in waves. They say death usually comes in threes, which I've found to be true. Sometimes it comes in clusters of threes like we will have a group of three die within one or two weeks a few weeks later another set of threes then go a while without anyone dying. If you've read any of my posts before, you'll know that I have a lot of stories about patients and residents seeing children. As of the past month or two I have a lot of new stories and I'm not sure why things have been so active all of a sudden. When I was still working night shift we were doing 2am rounds and my fellow coworker froze in her tracks in the hallway and turned completely white and she suddenly looked sick. I asked her what was wrong, and she said she saw a full body apparition of a little boy who looked at her then and he walked into the wall between two residents' room. Within a week the both residents died. Another thing that happened was this lady rang her call late. No big deal. We go to answer it. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. The resident asked us why there were children buried in the backyard. Down the hall they was adjacent to her, another resident was banging her head in the wall at the same time talking about children. She died shortly after. This one really creeped me out big time but we had a resident ring, and yet again we go to answer it and she tells us that we needed to see the lady across the hall because she's dead. We didn't believe her and thought she was crazy but we went to check on the resident and sure as shit she was dead. Another story the nurse's station at the nursing home has very high counters so when someone walks by when you are sitting you can only see the top of their head. We were sitting there in the middle of the night and we see the top of what we assume to be a woman's head. She had short curly black hair and she was walking very fast with a purpose down the hall. Come to find out around the same time on a different unit another resident who fit that description passed away. Anyways that's all I've got for now. Thanks for reading. Story is when I used to work in a nursing home and in hospitals and nursing home, it is literally haunted because when people pass, they cannot open the windows and the doors, you know, to release the the spirit of the person who has passed. So a lot of them are trapped basically in that in that facility, right, wherever they, they pass. Anyway, so. Whenever you are working in a nursing home or a hospital, a patient passed away, you have to bathe them and, you know, put them in the bag and all that stuff. So I, this particular day, we were bathing and bagging a body. So while we're bagging the body, we are in this particular room, which basically a lot of people have been, you know, unspoken word of how this room is the most haunted room in the whole place. And it was a nursing home. There's always this one particular room that's the most haunted because everything always happened in that particular room. Call bells would go off with nobody touching it. There's nobody in the room and call bells are going off. You will hear things and all that stuff. So we're bathing. We're bathing and bagging this particular resident that had passed. And we're just talking amongst ourselves because it, it was, you know, two people doing it. So we're talking amongst ourselves and we are doing all the work and stuff because, you know, we we're not going to be quiet. It's it's just weird. It's not that we couldn't be quiet, but it's just weird to just be, you know, bagging the body and bathing the body. And it's just a body and two people are there. And they're not saying a word. It's just weird. So we're making small talk. Right. So while we're making small talk, all we hear is. A noise in the bathroom. 
and all of a sudden the door that was open not completely open because you know we left it like halfway open just in case you know it's just it's just and plus it was nighttime i have to say it was nighttime we hear a noise in the bathroom and all of a sudden the lights start flickering in the room where we were basically bathing the body and then all of a sudden the door slams shut like it's shut so loud as if the door was open wide but it was not open wide and no windows were open so it's just the door so we couldn't say it was wind because there's no wind coming into the room you know what i mean the door closed shut and we both jumped and we looked at the body we looked at each other we looked at the body we looked at each other and then we ran to the nursing station we're like uh, yeah no not today so they actually had to get a group of like two other people from a different wing a different unit to come and finish their work because we we're like i'm not going back in that room and that was before i was like okay with bodies you know after a while you do this for such a long time you basically zone out like you don't really you don't really associate, you know, you just disassociate yourself from what you're doing. I don't know if, if that make any sense to you, but that's what happened after a while. Like we just kind of got used to it and it's just a normal thing for us now. Like we don't bother, we, we don't get bothered by the noises. If the light comes on in this particular room, we don't really get bothered anymore. We're just like, oh, Mr. Jones is active again or da -da -da, or whoever was the last person that passed on will just you know give them a nickname and say this person is acting up again da -da -da, because at this point you're in the field and things are bound to happen and i know so many stories that my coworkers have shared with me that they seen people who have passed in the hallway asking them questions asking for a cup of water you know doing this and that there's so many things going on in the medical field there's the stories are real because i've seen i've experienced some myself and you know i've heard people who have experienced those things tell me their stories so yeah i do know these stories are real and there's a lot of people actually who confess in the middle of you know passing on they confess to all the things that they have done and also we have a lot of racist um, patients because you know like when you work in nursing homes you do you work with those patients but in their time when they were alive racism was a huge thing so you will experience that while working with them but don't take it personally because a lot of them are like they have dementia and they would say certain stuff the way you're like what did you do when you were you know young what is going on you know so it has you really questioning stuff anyways guys that's my little take on this part of the story i'll see you next sunday bye